Dante Certification Program Level 3 In previous modules, we talked about different types of messages, unicast, multicast, and broadcast. In this module, we'll delve deeper into how broadcast and unicast work together and we'll also explore ARP, that is, Address Resolution Protocol. Broadcast is necessary to facilitate unicast communication. Devices use ARP to find other devices in their LAN segment. If the MAC address of the target IP address are unknown, an ARP request is issued by the sender. The intended recipient replies to that ARP request. The sent broadcast frame and the reply unicast frame are used by switches. This fundamental exchange is what makes switching in a LAN efficient. One of the simplest protocols to look at in order to begin to understand data exchange is ARP. ARP is also very common. It's one of the building blocks for communication. An ARP message is encapsulated inside an Ethernet frame in the payload section. It can be considered a packet. It does not have the same structure as UDP or TCP. Unlike a datagram or segment handed down from the upper layers of the stack, it exists as a very simple message. The frame header is left as normal. Let's look at how sending and receiving unicast works. In this example, device A wants to send a message to device C. Device A knows both its IP address and MAC address. Device A also knows the IP address of device C, but it doesn't know the device C's MAC address. In order to find device C, device A issues an ARP request. The broadcast message goes everywhere. So what exactly is an ARP message? Let's look at what device A would write into this particular ARP message. The device does not know the destination MAC address, so it broadcasts to the broadcast MAC address, which is FF in all octets. But it does know its own MAC address, in this case, AA colon BB colon CC colon DD colon EE colon 01. In this case, we're using standard Ethernet, so that will be Ether type 2. This concludes the Ethernet frame header. Next, we'll deal with the actual packet payload itself. Because ARP doesn't use TCP or UDP at the transport layer, and is a layer 2 protocol, it only uses the address space of the Ethernet header. The hardware type will almost always be 6. Other hardware types can be 10 megabit Ethernet, ARCnet, frame relay, ATM, HDLC, fiber channel, and serial line. Next, we have the protocol type. This complements the hardware type and is used to describe which layer 3 address scheme we're using. Dante devices use IPv4, so the value 2048 is used. The hardware address length refers to the length of the IEEE 802 MAC address, in this case, 6 bytes. And the protocol address length refers to the length of an IPv4 address, in this case, 4 bytes. Probably the most important field is next, the auth code. This code describes what's trying to be achieved by the message. For standard ARP, it will be either 1 for ARP request or 2 for ARP reply. In our example, it will be 1 at this stage. We fill in the source MAC address next. Why haven't we done this on the Ethernet frame header already? Well, yes, but if we are using something called proxy ARP, then the Ethernet frame header may change. It's best to make sure our packet has complete information. Next, we fill out the source protocol address. In this case, it's IPv4 and is the IP address of device A, which is 192.168.1.1. And the target hardware address is unknown, so it will be the broadcast MAC address. 
and finally the target protocol address for device C that's 192.168.1.3. The ARP frame is sent over the wire and it reaches the switch. The switch receives the frame and reads the header. The first field is the destination MAC address. This is the broadcast MAC address, which is FF in all octets. The switch knows from just this part of the frame that it must flood this frame out of all of its interfaces. The next field is the source MAC address. This is the MAC address of device A. The switch adds this MAC address to its MAC address table. Because it has seen traffic coming from this MAC address on a particular switch port, it knows that any traffic destined for this known MAC address can be sent directly through the corresponding switch port. This is how a switch segments a collision domain by allowing unicast traffic as distinct from broadcast. As we can see, the switch takes a note of the source MAC address and populates its MAC address table. Devices B and C read the packet contents. Device B then drops the packet and C adds that information to its ARP table. Device B discards the packet and does nothing. Device C reads the packet and sends a response. It changes the destination MAC address to AA colon BB colon CC colon DD colon EE colon 01. It changes the source MAC address to its own MAC address. It changes the opcode in the packet to 2. It swaps the target and source hardware and protocol addresses. Device C then sends the response. The switch then updates the MAC address table. Now the switch receives the frame and reads the header. The first field is the destination MAC address. This is now unicast. The switch checks its MAC address table and it sees a match. The switch sends the reply only through switch port 1 as it has a record in its MAC address table. The next field is the source MAC address. This is the MAC address of device C. The switch adds this MAC address to its MAC address table. Because it has seen traffic coming from this MAC address on a particular switch port, it knows that any traffic destined for this known MAC address can be sent directly through the corresponding switch port. This is how a switch segments a collision domain by allowing unicast as distinct as broadcast. So, the reply is now unicast. Device A now receives the response and it updates its ARP table. ARP uses the lower layers of the OSI model. At layer 1, we have the physical switch port. At layer 2, we have MAC addresses. We refer to IP addresses at layer 3. The purpose of ARP is to find out about layer 3. So, the switch glues layers 1 and 2 together in its MAC address table. The devices glue layers 2 and 3 together in their ARP table.